I'm Greg Starling. I've been at Tailwind now for uh, right at four years, and I work with the the Innovation Lab and, and work with our engineering teams and our product groups. Why should small businesses care about AI and AI prompt writing? What we hear a lot, what I've heard a lot is, you know, I don't have time. I'm, I'm a solopreneur. I'm a, you know, two, three person company. I'm a small business and I don't, I don't have time to do all the things. I know I need to do the things. I know I need to be, you know, posting every so often. I know I need to write blogs. I know I need to do this and that, but I just don't have, have time or I'm not a very good writer and it's not my skill. You know, I got into this because I'm really good at painting or I got into this because, you know, I'm really good at, at creating, you know, lesson plans or whatever it might be not because I'm necessarily really good at, at writing social media posts or that I'm really good at writing a blog. And AI, I think, takes does solves that in two ways. One is it gives you a lot more time, right? You, I, I think we romanticize the blank page a lot, and we, we think, oh, look at all the possibilities. But the truth is a blank page is really um, daunting a lot of times. And it gets you past that blank page. It gets you from zero to one very quickly. Um, and then, and then it can even go well beyond that, getting you to seven, eight or nine where, you know, you're just having to, to do some tweaks and some additions. So things that, that might've taken you four or five hours, you can get done now in 30, 45 minutes, whenever you use AI. And as you get better writing prompts or using tools to help you, um, write prompts, uh, that gets even, even quicker. And so, um, I'm sure people like me who I do nothing but write prompts all day, every day. Um, I have a giant library that I built up of prompts and, and it significantly streamlines my day. It gets me moving and, and I'm much more productive and effective because I have these prompts. So I've heard you describe chat GPT as boring. What yeah. makes you think that? <laughs> well, it's because of how it, it's boring by design. That's not a bug. It's a feature. Um, and so what, what large language models like like the GPT models, like GPT-3, 4, chat GPT, but really any lar large language model um, that's out there, they, they are supposed to predict the next word or the next you know, phrase um, that's most likely to come after what's, what's just happened. And so whenever you think about that, if you think about, well, this is a series, this is a sentence, this is a few sentences, what's the next most likely thing? Um, that's boring. Like that's that's not an exciting thing. That's, that is what you would expect. And, 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 you know, I, I made the joke the other day, like if you're hanging out with a friend, you would never say, you know, I want to hang out with a person who says the thing I always expect them to say. Um, and that's what, that's what um, these large language models do. And so you have to prompt them in such a way to kind of get them off of, off of that uh, very kind of here's what you expect. Now, there are certain instances where that's great. Like if you want to learn um, facts and features about a particular city, or you want to to dig into historical in, uh, information or or legal precedents or things like that, you you're you're you are looking for a really straightforward answer. But whenever you get into more of the creative side, when you're trying to write a blog or write things for social media, write um, an intro to a book, whatever it might be, um, you really don't want that. What's the most likely thing for it to say? And so. Um, that's the way it's designed and you really have to kind of work at it to make it not give you those kind of more boring responses. What is an AI prompt? And assume, you know, explain it to me like I'm five. I like think at the, at the very most simplest way to explain it, a, a prompt is just how a, is the, the words that a human is using to talk to the machine, to talk to the AI. And so the prompt is just a series of, of, of words that are put together to let the AI know what you're trying to get it to do. Good prompt writing uh, is is clear. Um, it it tell, it's telling the AI exactly what you need it to do. Uh, it's concise. Um, I think there's a quote. It's often attributed to Einstein. It probably is an Einstein, but it's you know basically it has everything it needs but no more. And so that that's a really good prompt. It is is very very simple, um, concise in that way. And then it but it also covers all that you need it to cover. Um, so I, I think people can tend to go too too far one way or the other. You can't be just really generic uh, and not get good results anyway. If you say, you know, write a write me an Instagram caption uh, about some something part of your business, um, that's not going to be near enough detail. But you can also get in way too deep of detail and give it a lot of extra information. And so it's 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 being very concise, very clear, but still robust enough to get the entire uh, message across to to the AI. Uh, the the example that I used in the the blog that I wrote was was for a um, writing a grant proposal. Uh, and, and in that, what we did was we set up a, a persona because again, so we're, we're trying to get off that boring piece. We're trying to get off of 
of just it expecting what to do. So by saying you're a grant writer uh, or even an expert grant writer, even better, it's it's now being able to to hone in on its data around well what what are grants that have been written in the past. So by by creating that persona, um, you're in a much uh, you've already jumped way ahead. So that's kind of the first thing you want to do is you set up that persona. You're a grant writer. And then you want to give it the task, you know, I want you to do this. Like in this case, like I want you to write a, a grant and then you want to give it like step-by-step instructions. Uh, and those instructions um, in the particular case of the grant was, you know, doing some research and, and, and putting some different things together, but you want to give it those specific steps. Then I always like to come back and tell it what the goal is. So in my case, if for a grant writer, the goal would be to have a, uh, a written proposal that I would be able to hand off to somebody who might be funding a nonprofit. And then if necessary, sometimes I'll throw in some additional constraints. Um, you know, maybe maybe I don't want it to use certain words. Uh, I know like in our customer service prompt, we we tell it specifically to not sit, not use the word satisfaction um, because we don't want it to, we don't want satisfied people. We want people that are delighted, that are happy. So we don't want it to ever respond back with satisfaction. So that might be an additional constraint that you might want to put in kind of at the, at the end of your prompt. But once you have those elements, you're, you're really well beyond what most people are doing. You gave us a prompt and we will take a look at this in chat GPT. The prompt that we have is here. It says you are an expert grant writer. So that's the persona part. Yep. Your task is to write a compelling narrative for a grant proposal to address a specific problem. So here's where we would put the, do we put the problem in here or do we go down and put the problem in at the bottom? In this case, we'll put the problem down at the bottom. A lot of times whenever I write things, I'm writing them that are getting used over and over and over again. If you were just doing it one time, you could definitely put it up at the top, but this doing it this way will let you use it a lot. Use, Use that same kind of format repeatedly. Okay, super. So our problem is going to be, let's say, um, cleaning up pollution in the Passaic River. And next we're being clear and concise. The narrative should start with a clear and concise statement of the problem, followed by a detailed description of the proposed solution and its impact. Okay, this is going to get a little bit harder, but let's say the solution is going to be dredging and disposal of PCB laden soil at the bottom of the river. And its impact would be so that the water is cleaner for recreational use near a large metropolitan area. Is that good? That's outstanding. That's really, really good. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And then targets, let's see, the narrative should be concise and to the point, good. The goal is to convince the reader that this project is worth funding and will significantly impact a specific target. So the target would be recreational users of the Passaic River in the New York City metro area. Anything else? No, that ought to be great. Okay, we're going to push the button now. See what happens. Wow. So you can see. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. So you can see like as this is coming together, like this is this is a huge jump start for somebody who's writing a grant. Uh, I actually put this together uh, for somebody who works at um, Tailwind. Uh, um, our, our director of engineering, Nicole, her husband. Uh, is a firefighter and he writes a lot. Uh, he's a volunteer firefighter. So he writes a lot of proposals for their volunteer fire department. And this is helping him dramatically speed up that that proposal writing process. So uh, it, it is really solid. It gets you way, way down the road towards having what you need. To summarize what you said, we're clear, we're concise. We're telling the AI exactly what we need, but not telling it too much. And we're being very specific about adding problem solution and the target for this. So that's a basic prompt that you've created. What do you do after you have a basic prompt to make it really, really effective? That particular prompt, that's probably like B5 or B6, but you go in and, and you edit. And that's actually any um, anything, whether that's just re reposting the prompt to see if the result is better or actually editing in line and resubmitting it. But you 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 try to hone it in, and so you give it give it time. Um, it really depends on on what the prompt is specifically for. 
um, in this case, with a grant, you may actually get feedback from, from people you're giving the proposal to and say, hey, it felt like it was missing this or felt like it needed more of that. And so you go in and you, you edit your prompt and you make sure the next time you, you have that piece of information. Um, in the case of maybe social media posts, we can look and see, well, these types of, of posts are getting a lot more interaction or a lot more engagement. So let's let's figure out what what uh, these did that was different, maybe, and then modify our prompt to be able to to make sure that we we get those elements out that are, that are creating that engagement. So you're just constantly refining and tweaking and refining and tweaking. Uh, at, at Tailwind, we probably refine, rework our prompts at least once a month um, to, to add something new that we've learned, um, and and probably do a, a full on over, overhaul every two or three months of of just like let's let's figure this out. This this space is moving so quickly. What has changed in the last two or three months, and, and let's let's be able to use that to make make even better prompts. So that's really it, kind of in a nutshell. You're just constantly, constantly iterating on um, the the verbiage to try to get get a better result out of the system. So, what are some pitfalls that you want to avoid when you're writing prompts? Well, um, yeah. So there there are a few things. Well, we we talked a little bit about um, making sure you cover everything, and so I think that's the thing is is asking too little, like not asking, um, not being verbose enough. Um, it, it's easy to think, well, I want to be really concise, but you want to make sure you don't get too, too concise. And on the other hand, you don't want to ask too much. Uh, the, the different prompts can get pretty uh, confused. If you ask them to do two or three things at once, that's why at Tailwind, we, instead of asking a whole bunch of things at once, we actually iterate through and say, and ask it. So in the example of a, of a blog, we might say, give us the titles, give us an outline, and then just continue to work through paragraph at a time. So that way we keep it very concise and, and it knows exactly what it's supposed to be doing because you don't want to put too much into a single prompt because it just doesn't perform really well. Uh, sending it mixed instructions can be really bad. If you were to say something like uh, you're an expert grant writer, uh, write this in the style of a particular comedian that you think is good. Um, it's not going to know what to do because grant writing would be much more academic. Um, whereas a comedy com comedic style um, would be you know funnier and more lighthearted and so instead of getting a funny lighthearted grant uh, proposal you're going to get a really confused um, probably generic sounding proposal so whenever you you mix instructions that's actually a lot different than it is on the image side so if you're dealing with generative AI on the image side using something like a dolly or a mid journey or stable diffusion mixing different artists can actually or different art styles can actually come up with some really interesting end results um, on the the, the generative uh, text side, um, it really causes a lot of lot of problems. So you definitely don't want to mix um, different styles into a single prompt. Another thing that people do is uh, they might believe what it says, and and you should. I mean, it gets better and better all the time. The newest GPT four on uh, from OpenAI is is uh, much much better than GPT three was, and I'm sure they'll continue to improve, but. I have done things where I've said, hey, give me, uh, you know, the top 10 books on uh, writing ad copy. And seven or eight of the books are really excellent books. And two or three of the books don't exist at all. Like they just, the, the AI just straight made up a title of a book and an author. Um, I've seen it make up quotes, uh, data, statistics. So anything that's verifiable, you should definitely verify. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust a quote. I wouldn't trust uh, anything that's cited. I would just do a, a double check and go go jump in your favorite search engine and, and, and just make sure that that actually is a book or that actually is an, a, an academic article or that actually is the right quote, um, because it will be very it will make something up and it'll be very uh, convinced and convincing um, that that it sounds like it knows what it's doing. And, and I think the, probably the last thing is just understand that the data stops at a certain point in time. And so if you if you wanted to to know if there's something that's gotten really hot, um, there's something that's in the news, there's something that's that's sp specific or or really interesting, um, it may not have any context. So right now, um, the only AI that I'm aware of that's connected to the internet is is Bing's, um, and even still, it it has some older data. Um, so they're not connected to the internet. There, there's a reason for that. It's, it's there's some some ethical concerns that you don't want to maybe to necessarily have that live of information. You want to be able to to make sure the information has gone through um, at least a level of of uh, ensuring that it's it's safe and it's correct. And so um, it's necessarily older information. It's not really old, but it, it, it's six months to a year old. So. Um, it's not going to give you the really just terrible advice, but it may be telling you to do something like 
use hashtags on Pinterest whenever that's no longer a thing. And so um, that's the, that's just one thing to keep, kind of keep in the back of your mind is to 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 not realize that um, this data is is a little out of date, not not significantly out of date, but it, it might be six months or 12 months out of date. So if you're looking for advice or things like that, that'd be something to keep in the back of your head for sure. What is an AI hallucination? Yeah, so AI hallucination, that is like a euphemism that a lot of us in the space use. Um, I think the mean way to say it's it's AI lying. Um, the nice way we say it's it's AI making something up. Uh, but we just tend to call them hallucinations, and that's exactly what I was talking about in terms of like a pitfall. Is uh, the AI will will absolutely make up a quote from an Albert Einstein or make up a quote from an Abraham Lincoln that that they didn't say. Um, it will cite an article um, as an academic article of something that you can use that doesn't exist or a court case that never happened. And so it's just that's we call it a hallucination because it is it it acts like it's actually seeing it. It, it, it as far as you can tell from its sight, it, it is convinced that that is the absolute correct um, response, and and that is absolutely something you should look out for because it will make things up. And so so anything that's verifiable, I would one hundred percent verify it before before I put it out in the world. Any other advice for small businesses who are considering adding AI to their marketing toolkit? Um, I think, I think finding what works for you. Uh, I always tell people that I, I am really proud of, of what we do at Tailwind. Uh, my wife uses it for her business. Um, I'm, I, I would put us up against anybody, but I would, I would say, go look at competitors. Everybody has a free trial. Um, figure out what works for you. Uh, you could use something if you're good at writing prompts, uh, jump into chat GPT and, 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 and do it. If, if you don't want that that burden of figuring out the right way to put all the words together, find a, a partner like a Tailwind or somebody else that that's done kind of that work for you, um, and, and we'll we'll get you moving forwards. But I, I think the 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 worst thing you can do is to ignore it. Uh, I, I I don't think, and I, I believe this is my whole heart. I don't think AI uh, will replace people, uh, but I do think that people who are really good at AI will replace people. And and why I say that is because if if and I, I talked to a, a really great lady uh, the other day, and she was saying it would take her a full week um, to 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 write the blog post and then create all the supporting content for a blog post. And now using our tool, Ghostwriter, she was able to do that all in a day. And so that is an enormous time saving. And so what we were talking about is is what she was going to do. And and she has a couple of young kids, and she's like, you know, I'm so excited because I'm going to spend some more time with my kids. But I'm also going to be able to put out more content. So she said, instead of working five days a week, I'm going to work two days a week. I'm going to put out double the content, but have three whole extra days to spend with my kids. And people, depending on kind of the the season they are in their particular life, will make different decisions like that. She could have, if she was in a different time, uh, maybe maybe her kids had gone on, maybe she didn't have kids, whatever. She may have made the decision to, I'm just going to 5X my work. Um, and and that those are the kinds of things that you'll start seeing that you're going to have to compete against. And so if I were a small business owner, I would figure out, figure out how I can use it in my specific um, environment, figure out how I can use it in the, the best way possible uh, for, for what I'm trying to do and, and really get, get good at it or find a partner that I trust really well to ensure that they, uh, I kind of hitch my, hitch my AI wagon to, to their coattails and, and, and ride with them because I, I think it's going to really, really um, shake up the marketplace in, in a real way. And so, so I, that'd be my big thing is understand it, understand how you can use it and then, and then figure out your best plan forwards.